In this video I'm going to demonstrate the lab jack. This is a small data acquisition system. It costs about $120. can be bought on Amazon. I've now integrated this into my data logger software. It has several A to D channels, 12 bits, and a couple of timer channels, and some digital I.O., some DACs. Fairly nice setup for what it is. You can see the connector on the back is for additional I.O. It has some nice uh, screw terminals up here to connect in your wires. These uh, two cables here go off to my simulator. Software installation was fairly simple. Drivers seem to work with Windows 8.1 without any problems. To test the lab jack, what I'm going to do is connect up a sinusoidal waveform. This will represent the output shaft signal. Notice it's being FM modulated. The modulation depth and the frequency are set, so it's sweeping roughly from 20 miles per hour to about 40 miles per hour, and it's doing that every second. Okay, let's go ahead and launch the data logger software. This is the latest software. Notice that when this software was started up, I didn't do anything to power cycle the ECM. Let's just uh, do that again. I'm going to exit the program and I'm going to restart it here. And you notice it takes right off and runs. Um, most of the problems now I've got worked out, so this is actually a fairly clean interface. Uh, so there's no real need to power cycle the ECM. You can see the GPS receiver part of the software. These are the satellites that are being received and the current mile per hour. This mile per hour can also be logged. On the strip chart view we have several additional inputs. Currently with the lab jack I'm supporting four analog channels, the very first four, and the crankshaft and the output shaft speeds. From this I can determine the clutch slippage, the mile per hour, and the distance that the bike has traveled. There are two screens for the lab jack. One of them is showing the analog signals, the other the digital. Here on the analog gauge we can see the mile per hour going up and down while the RPM is staying constant. Let's go ahead and plot some data. And again you can see it sweeping from roughly 24 miles per hour here to up to about 42 miles per hour and again it's doing that every second. What I'm going to do now is change the update rate from 10 times a second to 100 times a second. And we can see here what's happened. This sinusoid represents the frequency modulation of the output shaft. Now the reason that we need this kind of speed is because the motorcycle will actually respond at about this rate when we're looking at the clutch. In order to simulate the clutch I'm going to use data that was collected on my drag bike and collected with my other data logger. So what we're looking at here is the clutch engagement. You can see here it starts out with no engagement. As I start to release the lever it starts to rise and here after about a half a second it's up to about 40 percent engagement and here we can see as the clutch basket begins to speed up the weights of the arms actually come into play and lock the clutch up so what I did is I'm going to take this data and I'm going to store this inside of my simulator and play this back This is the latest of the simulation software. It now has the ability to run closed loop. I've added a slider on the side here which allows me to manually set the clutch engagement. There are two signal generators that were not previously used. These are used to simulate the basket and the hub speeds having these isolated from the normal output shaft and the crank speed allows me to set up any configuration I'd like. So for starts here I'm just going to manually bring the RPM up. I'm going to put the bike into gear and I am going to engage the clutch. 
as we can see here a fixed 11.7 miles per hour and 1587 rpm we'll hook up our output from the simulator and see it's reading the same rpm and mile per hour is what the simulator is outputting again here we can see 8871 8870 roughly 65 miles an hour 65 miles an hour here as I begin to disengage the clutch we can see the mile per hour begin to drop and increase as I re-engage the clutch we'll go ahead and start the engine We'll go over to our engine model page and what I'm plotting here is the RPM of the engine and you can see here it's slowly decreasing as the motor begins to warm up. Over here we can see the two speed sensors, the pink being the lab jack, the orange being from the ECM. I'm going to start to open up the throttle a little bit. You can see the two relatively track one another and here we can see it on the rev limiter now what we're going to do is go ahead and record some data I'm going to shut the plots off while we do this Okay, what I'm going to do is set the logger up for 100 hertz acquisition, open up the throttle, and release the clutch. Watch it hit the rev limiter, cut the throttle. And go ahead and pull the clutch. We'll stop our recording, select post processing, add the file, and here we can see our two clutch patterns. If we wanted to see the RPM, sit down here. You can also zoom into this. This is the data being reported from the ECM. In white, we can see the lab jacks RPM. So let's zoom in and have a look at the clutch. Here we can see this same basic trend. We release the clutch, it gets up to about 40%, and then the arms again kick in, and we get this exponential kind of an increase. Currently, there's no way to really adjust the engine model. I do have a setup screen. Uh, you can set up some basic information about the engine as far as the bore, the stroke, the cylinders. Uh, the mass of the crankshaft rods, mass of the clutch, mass of the transmission, maximum amount of horsepower, some information about the, the bike itself.